Hey there, everyone. I wanted to do a quick video today about what's going on with China and Pelosi visiting Taiwan. Supposedly, we'll see where that goes uh, and talk about my thoughts on the whole thing. Uh, I've read a lot of stuff this morning and I've watched a few videos on this and, and to get gauge everyone's perspective and all that. Uh, and a lot of, you know, ironically, a lot of things that I've read from mainstream media news sources and all that are kind of blowing this up, I think, a little bit bigger than it actually is. And a lot of the channels that I watch that aren't mainstream, a lot of prepper channels as well, are actually being more rational about this. So the people that they tell you are, you know, out of their minds are the ones being more rational about this. And the the mainstream, the trusted news sources are the ones uh, scaring the crap out of people. I wanted to give my thoughts on this whole situation because, uh, like, we, Brian and I talked about this the other day, and there's a lot of moving parts to all of this stuff, to where World War Three or, you know, the massive aggression would escalate to the point that nobody, China included, uh, could withstand. And I want to go through some of those points today. Now, with that, it, it's not to say that nothing could happen because eventually uh, China is going to want Taiwan. I mean, that that is going to happen. Who knows when, but it, it's going to be calculated. It's going to be strategic because they understand what the consequences would be. Now, China is completely dependent other than uh, they, they burn a lot of coal, but they don't have a, a lot of other natural resources. So I, I believe in this video, I'm going to play in a second. And we played it on the survival preppers show the other day. I believe they bring in one fifth of their natural resources uh, into the country. They import that. So without those imports, they would basically have to rob the, the citizens of their natural resources and divert it to the military. Uh, and that would be very bad for them. Along with that, you, you think about the, the amount that they export worldwide to the world and how dependent the world basically is on China. So there's that as well that goes into it. They, everybody's economy sucks right now, China included. So upsetting that apple cart uh, is not in their best interest, especially at this point. Now, I did a video the other day talking about how I, I think the new Axis and allies are sort of forming. And I wanted to go into, before I play this video, I wanted to talk about that a little bit because I want to explain myself a little bit better, I suppose. By that, I don't mean that there is some sort of axis of evil UN type thing set up uh, where Iran, China, Russia, and all of these different countries are meeting and, and figuring out strategy and all that. What I mean by this stuff is that it's, it's more of a, if the chips were on the table, if the cards were on the table, this is how things would align. And I think it, there's a really clear picture of, of that. And maybe it's been that way throughout history. I mean, with Russia and all these these rogue nations that, you know, ha are pitted against these westernized worlds and all of that. And that's where they would align. Uh, but I think there isn't some sort of coordinated effort, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, I think they're all a little bit too uh, narcissistic and only care about themselves to have any sort of union like that. But like China and Russia, not necessarily allies, but it's an the enemy of my enemy is my friend type situation. So um, it, it is something to be concerned about. But like I said, it, it seems like all of that stuff is being set up. And who knows, um, you know, how long something takes to get to that point. Maybe maybe it doesn't. Maybe this is just like the Cold War. Maybe this is like the Cuban Missile Crisis where the, it's, the tensions will get higher and higher, but it, it, it ends up kind of um, evening out. So, But anyway, back to China. I wanted to explain why they're unlikely. This video from Real Life Lore uh, is a really good video and explains why they would be... It, it's unlikely that they're going to escalate to the point of a World War III type situation. doesn't mean they're not going to escalate. And with this Pelosi situation going on, uh, it, it, you know, there probably is going to be something they're going to do. It doesn't necessarily be, mean uh, launching missiles and stuff like that. Could be cyber attacks. Who knows what they're going to do. But China almost has to, uh, if Pelosi goes there, has to uh, make some sort of move to, to sort of save face. Um, let me play this video real quick uh, and explain why, why it is that with their dependence on the importing natural resources, how we could kind of strangle them to the point where they would have to divert 
from their their citizens to the military. The Persian Gulf, the planet's largest concentration of hydrocarbon resources like oil and gas ever discovered. A quarter of the world's oil and 35% of the world's natural gas reserves exist around its shores. Separated from the Chinese East Coast not by one, but two major geopolitical choke points. The Strait of Hormuz that separates the Gulf from the Indian Ocean and the Strait of Malacca that separates the Indian Ocean from the Pacific Ocean. 80% of China's imported hydrocarbon supplies come from here and pass through both of these choke points, either of which could theoretically be strangled by the American Navy during a time of war, which is an import. Now with this, uh, you also see over here, Taiwan, there's there's also this strait right here, Strait of Taiwan, that has a lot of shipping activity as well. So uh, with this, you know, it's it's one of those things like if, if China were going to escalate to the point that a lot of people are talking about, they would almost have to uh, uh, take care of, you know, gain this port, I suppose, get rid of the, you know, the, the military here so it couldn't get blockaded. So that would almost be a first strike thing. If they were to go for Taiwan right now, which, you know, I mean, who knows when they do, but I think that's something that's inevitable. Uh, it would be the same type of situation to be able to not have that blockaded. So let me show you this, this map and it kind of explain or it shows the bigger picture here. You've got the Strait of Malacca, so if that were to be blockaded, uh, China would have to go all the way around uh, New Zealand, Australia, who are also on our side. So they would have that to deal with. There's a, a few different coalitions down here uh, that, that it, they would have to deal with as well. So they'd have to go all the way around here. Uh, or if they were importing from here, like that video said, this could be blockaded. But if it wasn't, they'd have to go all the way around Australia to do that stuff. That also brings up why Taiwan is so important to them, or one of the reasons uh, that Taiwan is so important to them is because this is also uh, could be some sort of choke point. So it's all very interesting how this could play out. Uh, Nancy Pelosi going to Taiwan, I just, yeah, I, I, one, I don't understand why. Uh, and it's kind of ironic, I think, that you've got this whole chips bill that's going through, which I think is is ridiculous. The the government getting involved yet again, but this chips bill going through at the same time, her husband's investing in Nvidia, and you know it, it seems awful coincidental. And now, uh, for some reason, she feels like it's important for her to go to Taiwan. Why is that? I don't know. I suppose we'll probably learn more about this stuff. Uh, in the coming months, in the coming weeks or whenever. But I think it's it's pretty interesting, uh, the timing of all of this at, and the coincidence of all of this stuff. But it is it is one of those things. You know, we think about this stuff as Americans and, and how China is becoming more aggressive, uh, seemingly more aggressive, doing more things. This is definitely bound to be something that kind of ramps their stuff up. They've already done a few things, their propaganda videos and, and all of that. But... It's one of those things, I don't think as Americans, we really understand uh, the consequences and the ramifications of. Because as Americans, we are so used to this, this Walmart mentality, this Walmart society, that everything is, you know, a, 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 TV, a TV's, buying a TV or some electronic device is a lot cheaper than actually putting food on your table these days. It's getting to that point. Uh, but that if something were to happen like a World War Three or even just, you know, a, a massive military conflict, those ports right there, uh, all of that shipping would be cut off. So that means that China's economy would suffer because of it. Uh, the stuff wouldn't be able to get out, wouldn't be able to get the, the resources, wouldn't the natural resources wouldn't be able to get in. It means that our way of life here in the United States that we enjoy so much, be able to go and go to Walmart and buy something that, you know, is probably going to last you a year, the cheapest made piece of junk, uh, because that's what we've decided that, you know, we want uh, that stuff. It, you know, where is that stuff going to come from? If those ports are blockaded, if that those shipping lines and all that are severed, where is that stuff going to come from? We see shortages right now already because of this pandemic stuff. Imagine if there were some sort of conflict in that area that basically just shut everything down. 
Uh, now, you know, some people say, you know, more power to it. You know, we, we need to get away from that whole Walmart thing and, and all of that. And I tend to agree a little bit, but at the same time, you're talking about some growing pains right there, getting back to the way things used to be. So I just don't know that, I, I just don't know that it's a really a good idea to be that gung ho about, uh, you know, the things that are going on right now and protecting Taiwan. We got to protect Taiwan uh, because if we do, and if I, I think inevitably we're going to need to, and I, and I do think we should, if it comes to that, but we ought to be ready as, as United States citizens and people around the world, uh, wherever you're listening to this from ought to be ready because the world has become so dependent on China for everything. And China is so dependent on the world this is a much different situation than you see with Russia and the Ukraine. You see the minor stuff, and, and I call it minor compared to what would happen with China. You see the minor inconveniences and the stuff going on, especially in Europe, uh, with their ties to Russia and their dependence on Russia for things. But on a global scale, in a, in a big picture type thing, it's nowhere near what the situation if there was some sort of conflict with China would be because that would disrupt everything globally. Uh, so I that's why I think that, you know, you talk about World War III. I don't know that that, that is, as far as with China anyway, something that's in the near future. And, and near future, I mean the next year or so. But it doesn't mean it's not a possibility either. It's always something we have to think about because, uh, like I said in the show with Brian uh, the other day, uh, we never, the people in Pearl Harbor, uh, never thought that was going to happen either, and it did. And it basically was what kicked us into, made us decide to get into World War II. Ch uh, Japan and China, both the, the same type of situation with those straits and that, that log jam. China, uh, or uh, Japan, depended on us for their oil at that point, and we cut them off, and this is... Uh, the, the route that they chose to take. So not saying that China wouldn't take some sort of action like this, especially if their economy got bad enough and started to decline or felt like it was their their last ditch effort, their their last last uh, you, know, you know bastion of hope basically. So not to say uh, all in all, not to say that this is not some sort of situation that isn't possible because I, I think it is, especially when you think about all these different rogue nations and all that stuff. But it is not something that I see as a big concern right now. My, my bigger concern right now is, is, you know, taking care of myself, my home, uh, my finances, the inflation, the shortages that we're about to see. All of those things are more, uh, you know, concerning to me at this point than that situation is. But it is on the radar and it is something that, that need, needs to be paid attention to because if something does kick off, uh, expect the the pains from that. You know, we watched the Iraq War on the on basically on TV, the first war that we actually watched on TV. This will probably be the same thing, but it's going to hit us at home, regardless whether it's military or not. Uh, economically, it's going to hit us here at home, uh, and it's going to hit and and by home I mean anywhere you are on the planet, basically, because everything's so intertwined and everyone is so dependent on China. Uh, for their stuff. Now, I don't know about European countries if they're the same, uh, if they're as dependent as we are on China for all of our stuff. Our dollar fifty trinkets and gadgets are, you know, the stuff that basically breaks in two years, and uh, you got to go buy another one. I'm not sure if other countries are as dependent as we are, but uh, in the last 20, 30 years, we, I mean. It, it this situation is the reason Walmart became the the biggest chain in the United States because of this. So if this gets tied, that lifestyle, that that convenience, all of that stuff, the stuff you buy on Amazon, uh, everything comes from China these days. So if that stuff can't come from China, the stuff you buy from Amazon, the stuff you buy from anywhere, doesn't get made. The chips, Taiwan makes you know a majority of the uh, the chips which go in everything. Uh, which, you know, uh, Pelosi, uh, you know, there's got to be some insider stuff with that. I'm not going to get into that in this video, but um, all of that stuff comes to an end. And I think that's the concern. So um, I hope that it doesn't get to that point. I, and I guess there's always a possibility, 
but I don't see that happening right now. So if you guys have any comments and stuff, this stuff, uh, my opinion on all this stuff always changes, and it should, uh, as, uh, as well as everybody else, because the more you learn about these different things, the more we know about it, our opinions do change, or they should change. Uh, so, uh, and we're, we're, our opinions are only as good as the information we have in the first place. So it always changes with this stuff. And it's always something I'm looking into reading about, trying to get new information about, uh, and figure out, you know, what the, what the rational response to some of this stuff is rather than just that fear and that, um, you know, that stuff that they put out in the mainstream media and all that, the stuff you see on Facebook and YouTube and, um, the, uh, the stuff that makes you, makes you more anxious and all that. At any rate, I'd love your your thoughts and comments on on what's going on out there, how how you see this, uh, you know, progressing here in the next year or so. I do think things are going to get a little bit worse, uh, but how much worse and all that we just don't know. It it really there's a lot of different factors that play into this stuff, and the way the world looks in a year from now could be far different than the way it looks now, and maybe there are. Uh, you know, the, the conditions are conducive for them, for China to take a little bit more action. We just don't know. But, uh, you know, all we can do is, is focus on now and figure that stuff out. But at any rate, uh, leave a comment uh, below if you've got any, any links or anything like that you want me to check out. Make sure and, and put those down there as well, and I'll check those out. Uh, but with that, we'll talk to everyone later. Take care and prepare.